Hello. Now, I thought I would show you a, a very quick technique. It'll be a very short video, this, hopefully, um, because it's just a very quick technique, but a lot of people have asked me about it uh, after I posted some pictures of the rusty bottles that I'd rusted using Paper Artsy Rusting Powder. It's widely available. Most paper artsy stockists have it. In the UK, Stampers Grove have it. Um, that's why I, where I get most of my paper artsy bits and pieces. You can order direct from paper artsy, but there is quite a big minimum order for outside of France because they are based in France now. Um, so these are the rusty bottles. Very, very simple technique, as I say. I have covered it on one of my other videos, but I wanted to just do this on its own because on the other video I did rusting this. Um, it's a valve. So I'll set that aside. The inspiration came from this bottle, which is a vintage bottle I picked up in a oh, antiques retro bric-a-brac shop uh, down in Cornwall. The rust on this one is actually on the outside. It's obviously been laid in with some metal bits and it's picked up the rust. But I love the effect of it. I added the twine, but I have a few dried flowers in it uh, just in my conservatory. But that was the inspiration from it. While I was out today, I'll just set those aside for the moment. I did pick up these. They are little glass bottles. I think they're, yeah, they're slightly smaller than this one. I think that one had some gems in it when it came. Uh, and they've got a little cork stopper. Uh, you can use them for all sorts. You can put little scrolls, message in a bottle, all sorts of things. But I'm going to rust some of those. You get, they're from a wor the Works a, um, budget craft store in the UK, £3 for 16 bottles. So you'll have a fair few to go at. So we'll just take three out for now. Set those aside. I've also got this, I think it's vintage, I aren't entirely sure. Yeah, I think it is because it's got a, a ground pontal mark at the bottom, I think. Oh no, it's pressed because it's got a seam. Um, and I think that's a chip. Um, I got it from our local, I don't know what you call it, Emporium, <laughs> Josie's, where they sell antiques, retro, bric-a-bac, all sorts of things. Uh, for me, it's an Aladdin's cave. They've got all sorts of bits and pieces, but you can pick them up at a lot of places. Uh, I like the tall, slim bottle because it'll be perfect for putting some seed heads in. Something like, whoops like these will look perfect in there. They're just out the garden. So we'll get, get started. I say I've got my rusting powder from Paper Artsy. I'll just get my little bottle of vinegar. As I've explained in other videos, this is a little flip top bottle of just white vinegar. Got a little bit of colour because it had a bit of uh, rusty vinegar in there at one stage. So we just take the stoppers out. I'll set one aside because I'm going to do something different with one. The paper artsy rusting powder, I just punch a hole in the top with the push pin, take the seal from the inside. While you're taking the lid off, always hold it over some paper so it catches any rusting powder that uh, is gathered in the, the top of the bottle, the, the cap of the bottle. And I'm just going to tip it up and tap it so I get some rusting powder in my bottle. Do the same again. You can do it with varying degrees of rusting powder till you get the desired effect. One of these I did it a couple of times and kept swirling it round. The little glass one seemed to work immediately so I think the plastic ones take a little longer but they the glass seemed to work quicker and easier. Put the push pin back in again 
and then I'm just basically going to drizzle a little vinegar into the bottle. Now I've got way too much, I don't know if you can see that, I've got way too much in there. So I'm going to pour some of that into here and into there. Right, so all I do now, I just swirl it round and you'll see that the iron rusting powder whatever it is in the rusting powder. I presume there's some iron in it. I have got a mask on by the way. I always wear a mask with this because it's a very fine powder and you don't quite know where it's going to go. And I just swirl it round till I think some has attached itself to most of the sides of the glass. Same with these. You can if you want put the lid in, give it a good shake up probably too much vinegar in there. Probably the same here but it'll evaporate eventually. Give it a good shake and it will coat the sides of the the glass jars. Um, I'll leave those uncorked now overnight. It might take a day or so uh, for the vinegar to work and for it to evaporate so that you get the reaction. Um, I'll leave them uncorked because the vinegar can then, vinegar can then evaporate but it also um, it just seems to it needs the air to oxidize. Um, if I'm sort of round and about every so often I'll come and swirl them round. As you can see in this one, I hope you can see, I'll get some white paper to put behind it. It started to coat the glass with little speckles. So that will be part way up the glass bottle. This I think I've possibly got a bit too much vinegar in. What I could do is get my little pipette and take a bit out. I've got some rusting powder in there as well. And just drop it back in. I'll swirl it around again and you see with less vinegar it does coat the sides easier. Just keep swirling it around. Yeah I had too much vinegar before. it and swirl it and move it around again. So as I say I'm going to leave those overnight, give them a couple more swirls. I could add a little bit more powder if I wanted. A little goes a long way with this stuff. And give it another swirl. So we'll come back when those have worked and I'll show you the results of those. Right, so we're back. I've left it probably about an hour and a half, uh, two hours tops. It's a very warm day here. Um, so I did add a little bit more rusting powder um, because I thought I think it just needs a little bit more so I just added a tiny bit more. You can gauge it, you can tell whether it's not going to react when it's too much liquid, not enough powder. Uh, you'll get used to it, the more you use the rusting powder you, the more you will um, get used to it. Now I'm hoping that this is just a little bit of vinegar in so I'll put my finger over the end. I think you can see there, it is shining, but if I angle it, angle it away there, there is a nice lot of rust in that bottle. It's, it's really, really nice. There's a little bit of the grey rusting powder still in the bottom, 
and a little bit up the side. I actually quite like that. I like the mixture of the grey and the rust. Uh, it's just a little bit of a contrast. Um, so that one's that was the, the older glass one. That's worked really well and it will continue because it won't have a stopper in it. It will continue to react till all the vinegar's gone. These are the two little ones from the works. Again, I hope you can see. I'll stand up and then you can see if I can angle it. There's quite a lot of rust uh, of rusting powder still to react. But there is quite a lot that has already reacted, you can see here. If I angle it like that, you can see. There's a little bit of vinegar still in the bottom, swirling around with the rusting powder. So that will, again, continue to react. This is the other one. This has got a lot more grey at the moment. Angle it that way. But it will eventually go rusty. So I'll leave those overnight and they'll continue to rust and they will they'll look fab when they're done. And I'll be able to use them on projects. Um I've just recorded another video actually of a shadow box, diorama, inspiration box made from an old drawer. So I'll be putting that one up shortly and I've used uh, a couple of the bottles in that and I think they look great. So I hope that's helped you. Um, I hope you give it a go and I hope you enjoy the results that you get with the rusting powder. I'll just show you the, the bottle again. It's Paper Artsy Rusting Powder. Um, I always use vinegar with it. It does say sprinkle on wet glue and spritz with water. You can use it all different ways. You can sprinkle it onto wet glue, uh, let it, the glue dry, brush off the excess and then I always add vinegar. I will say that that's what I personally think works the best. Um, they do say lemon juice works I've tried it. I didn't get as good as results, so I reverted back to the vinegar. I've I've always got good results with the vinegar, so I would I would stick with that. But always wear a mask, and have fun.